Hello everyone, my name is Binks and welcome back to Let's Play The Great Ace Attorney 2 Resolve where we are continuing in the second case of the game, The Memoirs of the Clouded Kokoro which it's been a while since I recorded because I did take a whole week off since I am preparing for my special guest, uh, my special visitor who is coming to visit me very soon um, so episodes and recording and all of that is going to be a little off for a while while I'm preparing my house for this guest. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, my episodes and everything is probably going to be, my schedule is going to be off. Um, so just keep an eye out on the community tab and Twitter and all of that. So, uh, X, whatever. I'll, I'll be keeping you updated for any changes or stuff that might be happening. But anyway, let's continue on. So we are in the prison speaking to Soseki-san. Uh, yeah, we got some interesting information. I don't really remember everything that happened, but looks like we were speaking about... Selden? Something about Selden. The guy. Alright, capital offender Selden. The truth is, well, I didn't know the details myself until very recently. That Selden man was arrested about a year ago now. Yeah, okay, that sounds familiar. And at the time he was hiding out in lodgings at Mr. Garadub's house. Right, I think he was, uh, the guy who, who was in your current lodging? Your apartment? Or whatever? What? He lived where you do now? That's right, yes. Exactly where I live now. In my very room. Oh my. Your room was previously occupied by a criminal found guilty of a capital offense? But before a sentence could be carried out, he died in prison. That was three months ago now. And that's when it started. The c c curse Hmm. Strange. What really is this curse you keep mentioning, Mr. Natsume? It's already caused one death. A few months after the criminal passed away in prison. A man died in the room. The man who rented it after Selden, in fact. That's a short period of time. It was only three months. So Selden died. Then, immediately after, a man rented the room and died? And already... And now you rented the room, and now all this bad stuff is happening? Three months! That is bad. Jeez. Okay, that is really sus. I can see why y'all are like, this is cursed. That's a very short period of time for all this bad stuff to be happening. Some bad juju, indeed. <laughs> bad juju, or more like somebody is definitely up to no good. And I I think I know who it could be. Hmm. The poor lodger. He, he was found dead in mysterious circumstances. The room was locked from the inside. The only thing that's throwing me off... I thought... If Sham Spear is the culprit... But he was also a potential victim? Because he almost died too. But he's in a different room? So is it the whole building? Or was it the room? Now I'm like confused. Because Sham Spear is like shady as hell. Like I, I still don't trust him. But then he almost died. So now I'm like... Is he a bad guy? I don't know. Because just because somebody is almost a victim doesn't mean that they're a good guy, you know? And the way he was acting towards um, Olive Green made me even more, like, inclined to think he's a bad guy. Uh, my... <laughs> My, my spidey senses are tingling. <laughs> oh, I don't know, man. 
locked from the inside. Exactly like the case we're dealing with now. This is like shady. No wonder Sherlock has been trying to keep us quiet about this case. This is this is bad. This is a really, really shady case. And we know it's going to be connected to like something that's going on in the present because this is a flashback. Mm. And I'm surprised this is only case two. This feels like it's really, really big. Like, it, it has connections possibly to what happened to Kazuma. And, like, it feels like it potentially goes higher up. Like, connected to the, the gas company. Like, this should be bigger and should be connected to, like, a case 5, case 4 kind of thing. Like, I'm surprised this is case 2. Like, dang, y'all. <laughs> How how deep is this game gonna go? Like, are we gonna be pulling like a uh, Ace Attorney 2 where like every case is connected and building up and up and up? <laughs> Cause if we do, I'll be very impressed. Like, dang, how much higher and deeper and more twisted is this gonna go? Exactly like the case we're dealing with now. Okay. So that's the convict's curse, is it? Yes, well, that was the start of it. Do you have any idea how the lodger before you passed away, Mr. Natsume? The official cause of death was asphyxia. Mm-hmm. Very suspicious, very gas-related, potentially, to me. When they discovered the body, the room was full of gas. Yep. Y'all should have already, after that, have been looking into the gas company and something with the gas line and the pipes and... Um, gas. I only found that out after I'd signed the lease. When Mr. Garadub came to tell me later, I couldn't stop myself from trembling. And then why were you... I know you were freezing cold or whatever... Then why did you keep messing with the gas or whatever? Because that would have made me nervous as hell to even mess with that. In fact, if I'd known beforehand, I'd probably have been too scared to take the room. Landlord's lease, luckily legal. Lucky for Mr. Gerda, maybe, but not so lucky for poor Mr. Natsume. And now you believe this curse is affecting you. It is, it is. At first, I just felt as though I was being watched all the time. And then you talked about having nightmares, didn't you? The, the dead are trying to take me with them. They come for me and try to suffocate me. Bruh. Like, bruh. How is he still alive? Because he said he's been feeling like he's been suffocating, so... Something is wrong here. Like... <sighs> Hasn't Garadub done anything? I know they're poor or whatever, but... I know the gas company has been trying to, like, figure out what's going on with, like, thinking their gas has been stolen, but have they not inspected the lines, or... I don't know, man. Just when I'm struggling to breathe, I wake up. In the room... Is as cold as ice! But why is your room so cold? London winters are too cold to bear without any heating on overnight. But for some reason, even though I light the stove before I climb into bed at night, the pilot light always goes out and the room fills with gas. But, but that's terrible. That's exactly the same situation as what led to the previous occupant's death. And then there's what happened to Mr. Shamspear last night, when he was mysteriously poisoned. There's clearly more to that incident than can be explained by a curse, though. Whatever can be the cause of all these strange happenings in Mr. Garadub's rooms? Have you even told Mr. Garadub what's going on? Like, he's your landlord. Hmm...
I guess that's it? I would hope he would have told him. <sighs> Let's go talk to Gyarados. What's up, dude? Like, I feel kind of bad for you, and I hope you're not in on it. Like, I don't think you are, because now I'm also wondering... <sighs> I thought that guy was your son, because that's, that's what I thought, but now I'm thinking maybe that guy is actually just your tenant, the one who died. Based on the conversation. Because the one in the picture, I'm thinking. Um, hmm. Ugh, you're here now, Mr. Gyarados. Right bolly business it is for me, you know. You're out and about. Were you at the Old Bailey, by any chance? Naturally. Afraid of my lodgings, hanging in the balance and all that. Not a trial to miss. The fate of what's already been dubbed your haunted lodgings, yes. Of course the place has caused quite a stir around the capital on more than one occasion already. It's the old haunted lodgings or some such. Ah, well, at least he knows. Makes you wonder what the place is going on, don't you know? Oh, I didn't know you were here. What's up? <laughs> yes, I'm sure it does. In fact, thinking back to Mr. Natsume's other trial just two days, two days ago, you were at the old Bailey then as well, weren't you? Testifying with your wife about what happened. Stopped off at the prison on the way home, in fact. Beastly business. I see. How is your poor wife doing? Kind of feel bad for her, because it was an accident what happened. So, what brings you to my haunted abode today, huh? Well, you haven't mentioned having a child, but... I kind of want to verify if that's your son or if it's just a, a tenant who died. Um. Some fishy fellow from the Far East and a failed actor chap of questionable character, eh? Yes. The house does seem to have become something of a magnet for rum fellows of late. Thanks to that volley curse. The convict's curse, you mean? Ah, heard the stories, have ya? Rotten scoundrels arrest you here, then the next trap in the room goes and kills over. Next chap, so... Can't be your son, cause I don't think you would, uh... Be talking about it so casually if your son died like that. Then there was that woman who dropped dead just outside the street. Not to mention the actor yesterday. Well, they're not dead. Those two survived, thankfully. Am I next, eh? Well, can't help but get the collie wobbles, can ya? When you say the woman who dropped dead outside on the street, do you mean Miss Green? Because Miss Green, who was stabbed by the knife, and Mr. Shamspear, who was poisoned last night, are both very much alive still. Yes, well, so is that blasted convict's curse, it seems. Personally, I should be quite content with such, log such lodgings. If as long as I don't die, if I'm just inconvenienced by injuries, then it's all good. 
A bath, a toilet, a fireplace, a fascinating history. Why, it sounds like the lap of luxury. Sherlock, almost dying is not luxury. Uh, I'm not so sure about that. Well, there's no bath or toilet included. Really? Then where the where the hell do they go to use the bathroom, sir? Or take a shower, sir? Well, there's no bath or toilet included and no fireplace either. They're freezing. They're dirty. They're miserable. How horrible. But you do look out for your tenants, don't you? By watching the rise and fall of the flames in your gas lamps appear? Yes, never hurts to keep an eye on things, in case they're ready. Mishaps or such like. I think you've, uh, you've had your mishap already, sir. <laughs> Sherlock, that's not helping. That's not helpful, Mr. Holmes. Uh, heaven forgive me. The words just came to my lips. Wow. Okay. Some fishy fellow from the Far East and a failed actor chap of questionable character, eh? There's no need for that, Mr. Garadub. That's right. Mr. Natsume is in no way fishy. Hmm, he is undeniably peculiar, however. Is it right that he took the vac vacancy immediately after the previous tenant passed away? Yes, that's right. I asked a state agent to find someone and he popped up the very same day. Never come across a chap so keen for a place with a background, as it were. I don't think it was the room's background he was keen on so much as the cheap rent, actually. So, how long has Mr. Shamspear been lodging under your roof? That failed actor chap? Hmm, let me see. Ah, of course. Yes, it's been three months now. Quite sure of it. Only three months? He's quite new here too, then. And to what do you owe your certainty in that regard, Mr. Garadev, if I might ask? Well, it was that Selden scoundrel, as it happens. Selden? The convict, you mean? Do Selden and Shamspear have some kind of connection, then? Hmm. Shamspear's tendency. That convict chap, Selden, passed away in the clink three months ago now, you say? Some malady or other. Yes, we've seen the report from the newspaper at the time. Well, it was only three days later that the tragedian... Tragedian? Showed his face. The actor fellow. Really? Yes, I remember it quite distinctly. Too small, this world we inhabit. Privy landlord, hear my request. I, the humble Shamspear. Excuse me. Uh, do you desire to take thy room on the middle floor offered erewhile for rent? Ah, terribly sorry and whatnot, but that won't be possible. I already have a lodger on the middle floor. Ground floor room's vacant, though. Nothing can be made out of nothing. Let me repeat mine will unto thee. Those curls must be muffling your ears. The room on the middle floor is taken. It's ground floor or nothing. Hmm, shady, shady. Very well. We have an accord. Glad to hear it. Uh, uh, okay. Lo, a Shamspear dance to celebrate. What did he say? 
Very well, we have an accord. And then he said, uh, Glad to hear it. Welcome to Briar Road. From what I heard in court today, sounds like the chap was thieving gas. And he was three months in arrears with the uh, rent, too. Yes, the fellow was a bolly player, all right. Thank you for your condor, Mr. Kerridib. We are most grateful. By way of appreciation, allow me to say one or two words. Give me my robe. Put on my crown. I have immortal longings in me. What was that? Was that supposed to be a cat dance or something? <laughs> What's happened to you? Shakespeare, my dear fellow. One of his most famous lines. I wish to divulge my own learning of the subject, for I have a turn for literature too, you know. Perhaps you could turn your attention to more apt lines then. Okay. Anything else we can do? Any other information? Um. Mm. I kind of want more information, though. Because I already, um, was going through with, uh, Natsume and nothing happened. I was presenting a bunch of stuff. I edited it out for you guys. Nothing happened. Uh. Nothing that interesting. Just do this all over again with Garrett up, I guess. <sighs> ah, an Altamont gas meter, yes. Decent fireplace in here, of course, so no need for a gas stove. But there's nothing better than a gas lamp for reading in bed, huh? Actually, Mr. Natsumi mentioned that the gas supply to his room kept failing. Uh, yes, that, uh, I had the gas company look into it. But they couldn't find a thing wrong. The chap must have been imagining things. I don't think he was imagining it. The poor man woke up unable to breathe. I think it was put down to ghosts at work or some such in the end. The place must be haunted. Hmm. Handprints on the wall? Mr. Garadub, could I show you this? Been quite a couple of days, as you can imagine. I'm afraid I'm rather tired. I haven't really got the energy in the old eyeballs, to be honest with you. Some other time, then. Okay. About Selden? What was this? A uh, condemned criminal dies of natural causes in prison. Manchester's Strange Ways Prison announced the death of convicted murderer and burglar Selden by natural causes in the early hours this morning. He had been suffering with fever since the end of October. Alerted by the shouts of his fellow cellmate, medical staff arrived to find him already dead before his capital punishment could be carried out. So interesting that he had a fever. I don't think that's that natural, by the way. Um... Oh yes, let's ask about this because I want to know if that's his son or just just this random tenant or something. Mr. Garadub, could I ask you to look at this photograph? Is that your son who's with you there? 
No, no, not at all. He was a lodger here once. Duncan Ross was his name. Okay. Duncan Ross. A street photographer happened to be passing, so I asked him to take a shot. Just for kicks, really. Was he by any chance the lodger before Mr. Natsume? Yes, that's right. Ah, the young gentleman who died in the room in mysterious circumstances. Just what Mr. Mustache was waiting for, one might say. Yes, young Duncan lived in the room at the top of the flight, at the first flight of stairs before that Japanese chap. Would you mind telling us a little more about him? There we go. You looked happy in that picture with him. Yes, Duncan Ross, young chap, was attending art school. Uh-huh. So, that painting of you on the wall there? He's the one who drew it, right? Hmm. Had to work to pay for it, man. Moved into the middle floor room about a year ago, after that criminal Salden was arrested. Young students are always on the hunt for rooms with a history behind them. A history of cheap rent, maybe, yes. Yes. Well, uh, anyway, it was one morning about a month ago now. I hadn't quite worked out the old trick of watching the gas lamps to see what my lodgers are up to at the time. So sadly, I was rather tardy to, to discover what had happened. Smell of gas that alerted me, it was. Ah, uh, yes. Synonymous with the smell of death. Called the police straight away, of course, and the officer kicked the door off its hinges. But once we got inside, we all barely collapsed. Because of the gas? Yes, room was full of it. No air at all. Stove must have gone out while the poor chap was sleeping in his bed. Oh, that's so sad. So, Mr. Ross suffocated to death. Of course, the police gave me a sound ticking off because the gas pipes were so old and all that. Can't you tell how much it set me back to have the lot replaced all over the house? So you replaced the pipes after that? And it's still happening. Oh. But even after you had all that work done, Mr. Natsume says the same thing. That the stove goes out at night while he's still while whilst he's asleep in bed. Well, that's the Bali curse. The convict's curse. I've done my duty as a landlord now. Someone's feeling defensive. He's really paranoid now. Ah, that reminds me, actually. Which explains why he was so worked up and, like, paranoid about look checking in on, uh... Uh, Shamespear. Yes. About young Duncan. The night before the poor chap perished. He'd been writing a letter. A letter of affection to a young lady. Yeah, I get it now. So that's Olive. Because there was that, that picture, right? Oh, man. So that's why... Oh, so Olive, that's why she wanted... She said she wished that Shamspear had died, right? So she's angry at Shamspear about Duncan's death for some reason. And Shamspear was so adamant about getting that room. The room that now Natsume has. The room that Selden had. And Selden was a criminal. So Selden died. Mysteriously. But then Duncan got it. Then Duncan died mysteriously. What is in that room? What is it about that room? 
Shamspear wanted it so bad. Hmm. But then how did Shamspear almost die the same way? That's so weird to me. Like, Olive... <sighs> That's so sad about Olive losing Duncan. Um, I just don't understand what the... Con like, how did uh, Shamspear almost die? What exactly Selden and Shamspear were up to? Like, you can tell that they're criminals, right? Because we know that Selden went to prison and whatever. Um... Like... Criminal... He received the death penalty. His loot. So he was definitely a thief. Murderer and burglar. So he definitely had a... a, a whatever he stole then... So then I think that whatever his loot is, is must be whatever Shamspear is looking for. Because Shamspear is broke, right? He's poor. So his missing loot must be what Shamspear is looking for in the apartment. And that's what he wants and is desperate to get. So he's killing people just to get it? But then how did... Did something go wrong with whatever he was doing uh, to poison these people with the gas and he accidentally poisoned himself? That's all I can think of. Like, accidental almost suicide. That's honestly, at this point, that's all I could think of. Hmm. To a young lady. Poor Olive. A love letter, you mean? Yes. Where did I put it now? Ah, here it is. Left it on my desk. If you excuse me. Let me see now. What does it say? To my most beautiful and charming sweetheart. Um, do you think that we should be reading such a personal piece of correspondence? My dear Mrs. Salto, that is precisely why I prefaced my reading with, if you'll excuse me. I will not excuse you, Mr. Holmes, no. Sadly, he didn't address it, though. I mean, we already put two and two together, so... So I've no means of delivering the thing. Rather sad, really. I see. It's going to play on my mind. But really, the identity of Ms. Mr. Ross's sweetheart has no bearing on the case. Susato, come on now. I think we should leave well alone. Yes, I suppose you're right. Indeed, the intended recipient's address is missing. However, there is a name attributed to the man's most beautiful and charming sweetheart. Mr. Holmes, please. I've already had to chastise you about this once. Why are you guys... I know you're trying to be polite. But it's important. It is connected to the case. Why? Sometimes people frustrate me. Sometimes there's a difference between being polite and, like, manners. And, like, solving a really important mystery. Like, come on. Especially when someone died, like, you have to pass on their their heartfelt wishes. Come on. My undying love to you, my colorful darling, Olive Green. Ah! Uh, Olive Green! The woman who was plunged into a coma after a knife plunged into her back outside this house five days ago. The victim of the last case Soseki-san was in court for, who regained consciousness only yesterday. Is it just chance that her name has come up now? 
Could it possibly be a mere coincidence? Of course not. Mr. Narahodo, whatever can this mean? Reading personal correspondence can't have its merits, you see, Miss Soto. <laughs> Sometimes being nosy can be helpful when you're in this line of work. Yep. Now we have to go back to Miss Green. All right, Miss Green. Oh, Miss Green, I'm so sorry. I feel just, just awful. Ugh, I feel so awful, Miss Green. Just thinking about the fact that you lost him. Mr. Narahodo, I've just finished speaking with the doctor. It seems Miss Green is well enough to be discharged at last. This is good news, but hopefully, just before she leaves... Ah! What is it? <sighs> Miss Green! Um... What was that? She clearly just hid something behind her back. Charge, so I'm just getting my things together. Miss Green, what were you just doing? Oh, um, nothing, really. I was just about to take some medicine the doctor prescribed for me, that's all. Well, we were hoping to have another quick chat with you, if that's alright. I don't really have anything else to tell you. Alright, she's definitely behaving strangely. Let's see if we can't coax something out of her. Ah, uh, Excuse you? I don't think that's medicine, ma'am. What- what is this? I don't think that's medicine. That looks shady as hell. Ma'am, were you about to do what I think you were about to do? This is the bottle that Miss Green was just about to drink from when we arrived. Yes, she looked rather preoccupied, didn't she? Oh, Olive, no. Perhaps it's very bitter. I can't stand bitter medicine. No, are you guys this oblivious, really? I suppose that could be it. In fact, whenever a doctor prescribes some medicine for a number of days, I always take it all at once. Oh no! Well, if you have to take something you don't like, it's best to get it all out of the way in one go, isn't it? No, Ryodosuke! No, you idiot! <laughs> I can't believe you just said that! So what, if you had to take a 30-day supply of pills, you take them all at once? You fucking moron. Jesus Christ, I can't believe you just said that. Wow. So you're literally overdosing yourself? Oh dear. And I thought it was Miss Green I should be worrying about at the moment. I I think... Oh. For having examined Miss Green's bottle before it falls from the table, down and one? I got an achievement. Oh, so it's gonna fall from the table. I had no idea. <laughs> okay. Is there nothing else? Oh, there's a card. Okay. This is the card that Miss Green was looking at so intently before, isn't it? Mr. Narahodo, we shouldn't be peeking at a young woman's private effects. Right, I should say peeking for gentlemen's effects only. You mustn't do that either. And maybe you, Mr. Sato, shouldn't be peeking into a young man's mind either, hmm? She does that all the time, though. Anything else new that's popped up for me to examine? 
So sad, because you know that's a picture of Duncan. Um, nothing else new. But not a hodo, seriously? You overdosing yourself on medication all the time? That's freaking insane. Why didn't she yell at him and tell him to stop? No, I don't see anything else. No. Okay. Olive, sweetheart, we we need to talk. It's wonderful news that you're going to be discharged, Miss Green. Oh, yes. I, I mean, thank you. Once people are better, this hospital staff don't want them lingering and wasting space. Not people like me, anyway. So I, I don't think I should keep anyone waiting. I probably shouldn't stand around and chat. Oh, Olive. She certainly doesn't seem to be in the mood to talk, that's for sure. Oh, um... Wait, uh, let's present something? Olive, what can we do? What can we do? Can we talk about Duncan? Scream, we were hoping to ask you about someone. Is this just gonna upset her, though? Mr. Duncan Ross, you knew him, didn't you? Oh, so that's how it falls. And the liquid is pink. Like Pepto-Bismol, except deadly, maybe? Oh no, I'm so sorry. The bottle of medicine fell down when she did. That's not medicine. Oh, Miss Green, are you all right? I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to startle you like that. No, no, it's all right. I just wasn't expecting it. But how do you know about Duncan? Mr. Ross had been writing a letter when he passed away. The landlord found it in his room. It was a very personal letter to you. It was at the art school. That's where I met Duncan a year ago now. He was working to fund his studies. He dreamt of becoming a professional artist one day. And the two of you became romantically involved. I think this music doesn't really suit the moment, though. This feels more sad, so it's like... It should have a more somber tone. Yes, that's right. We were very much in love. We were engaged to be married, actually. That's why he decided to move into a cheaper room. To save money for the wedding. Aww. And that's what led him to Mr. Garadubs. Yes. He told me he'd found the worst but cheapest room in the entire East End. And then, one month ago, that's when it happened. We're so terribly sorry, Miss Green. Well, it's all in the past now, I suppose. Poor Miss Green. She looks desperately sad. I was starting to think that's just her look. But now I see that she has every reason to feel the universe is against her. Um, I do hope you won't think I'm being rude, but... Would you mind leaving me in peace now? I have to leave the hospital soon. Oh, I'm so sorry. We didn't mean to hold you up. Of course, we'll be on our way. Mr. Narahodo. Who is this? Oh, it's him. Surely you were not about to leave. That's quite out of the question. But, uh, Mr. Holmes, I didn't realize you were here. But of course I was, my dear fellow. Watching intently from the shadows, as always. 
Well, make your presence known some t uh, next time. Oh my god, the mouse is dead! I'm so... Oh no, he drank from the bottle! No, you poor thing! Oh, that just proves that it is poison. Oh, you poor little creature. So that's the point of the mouse always being around. I just saw it lying dead. Oh, that's really sad. Oh, you poor baby. <laughs> I don't even like them, you know, creatures like that, but it's sad to see that. I'm sure Sherlock noticed the same thing. Mr. Holmes, what's this about? Something which occurs to me with some regularity, Mr. Sotto, is this. Why do detectives insist on such an ex post facto modus operandi? Why solve a case after it's happened, instead of preventing a case before it happens? That is what sets a great detective apart. Yep. What do you mean? There is a case waiting to happen under our very noses, Mr. Morihodo. So let us avert disaster. Let us prevent this case from ever happening with nothing but careful observation, right? Alright. All the clues you need are set before you. I mean, it's so freaking obvious, right? Even before seeing the mouse, the way she was acting and how depressed she's been, it's very obvious. All the clues you need are set before you. You need only look, and you cannot fail to see. You can do it, Mr. Nerehodo. I know you can. Don't make us do a dance of deduction. Come on now. It's, it's right here. That mouse seems to be dead. Look. I didn't notice it there before, did you? I think perhaps you drink the medicine that spilled out of the bottle. But that's... the bottle that Miss Green was about to drink from when we arrived. You... you don't think... Ah, I see you've come to appreciate the true nature of this scene. That of a tragedy about to take place. Yes, I... I think it's falling into place. I scream. The contents of the bottle you had before has spilt out onto the floor. And the poor mouse that drank it has sadly died. Ah. I think it's clear that the bottle must have contained a powerful poison. Damn poison. Always poison. Don't worry. I will attend to the mouse presently. Miss Green. Were you intending to go the same way as that rodent? To take your own life? Ah! Once we'd left... You would have put it to your lips again, wouldn't you? And taken the poison. I... I... No! Miss Green, please. Please talk to us. It definitely feels as though this card must be relevant. I mean, when we first arrived, Miss Green was standing with it in her hand in what can only be described as a very tense atmosphere. Yes, it may very well be related to whatever incident Mr. Holmes believes was about to happen here. Perhaps we should ask Miss Green about it. Hmm. Okay. Ten seconds later, and we would have arrived at a very different scene here. 
in all probability we would not have enjoyed this most delightful conversation. Of course, perhaps it hasn't been quite so delightful from your perspective, Miss Green. Actually, in a way, now that everything's out in the open, I feel like a weight has been lifted. Tell me, how did you acquire that medicine? Well, with this being a hospital and all, when the doctor comes to examine me in the mornings, he always leaves the medicine cabinet open for a while. So I snuck this out while he wasn't looking. Wow. I can't believe they even have that. Why would they have poison there? That's so stupid. It conspicuously locks a label. I wonder what it contains. I'm afraid I don't really know. But I thought if I drank it, it might just stop the pain somehow. Oh, please, Miss Green. Don't talk of such things. Well, it seems clear now that it contains poison. Yes, that poor little mouse is proof of that. Oh no! Oh, it's all my fault! What have I done? I shall, rem I shall remove this to my office, Miss Green. I take it you have no objection? No, none. Okay, what is it? Oh, the the envelope. Yeah, that matches. That matches. Okay, that was inside of Shamspear's, uh... Huh. Interesting. Very interesting. Neither the sender's name or address appears to be written on the envelope or the card. It arrived by post at my home. The day before the incident that put me in hospital here. I have inf I have information regarding the death of Duncan Ross. Come to the slug and salad on Briar Road at 5 p.m. on 17th. Don't tell anybody else about this letter or the meeting. It is a matter of utmost importance. Hmm... So he summoned her there? Is he... <sighs> hmm. Wait a minute, the 17th of this month? That's the day. That's the day you were stabbed on Briar Road. And 5 p.m. It's precisely the time when the incident occurred. Slug and salad, yes. A pub on the northern corner of Briar Road. Briar Road? Being the street that Mr. Gerdub's house is on. Does this mean that? Yes, I'm sure you've guessed. That day, when I was struck in the back by the knife. I was actually on my way to the slug and salad. So, that might have saved her? Because something bad might have happened to her there? I don't know. Weird. Goodness. So that's what you were doing on Briar Road that day. I'm sorry I didn't say anything before. I think... I really all have to ask you to excuse me now. I've told you everything. Yes, I'm very sorry to have had to drag up such painful memories for you. No, it's fine. Miss Green. Please, promise us you won't try to do anything like that again. Yes, don't worry. Your detective friend has the bottle now, anyway. And besides... 
I've been stabbed in the back and had a close shave with a bottle of poison and I'm still here. I think I'm destined to see things through to the end. I, it might seem a little conceited, but, well, that's how all this has made me feel. Leaving Miss Green and St. Bar Bartholomew's behind, we made our way back to Baker Street and with Mr. Holmes. Well, it would appear we've reached the end of the investigative trial for today. Yes, it's late. And Mr. Norohodo, did you discover anything that may be of use to you in court tomorrow, do you think? I think we discovered a lot. Details about Mr. Shamspear, Mr. Garadub's lodgings, the convict, Selden. There are many facets to this case, and we're yet to see to the heart of it, if you ask me. That's my feeling, anyway. I can't help wondering about the results of the analysis. Into Mr. Natsume's tea, you mean? Yes. Will they have found strychnine in it or not? Well, I feel that either way. It will be hard to escape the grip of our friend, Mr. Reaper. Oh dear. Yes, Rock Fanziques. But I wish you every success, of course. And though I was late to rise this morning, tomorrow will be a new dawn. I intend to spring from my bed at a crisp hour and attend the trial. Mr. Holmes, you going to come? Indeed. Whatever happens, I shall be there, assuming my eyelids cooperate in the morning. Well, I think we've done all we can. All that's left is to remain focused and keep fighting for Mr. Natsume's cause until the very end. London, the world's most prosperous city. Home to some six million people. But away from the razzle-dazzle, down back alleys and behind bricked up windows, the lonely lurk. Soseki-san had battled long and hard with loneliness during his many months here. And so I felt honor bound to battle equally hard for my compatriot, to lift the curse that gripped him. As Mr. Holmes said, tomorrow would be a new dawn for all of us. To be continued. Perfect timing. Perfect. Nice. <sighs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am. That felt good. That felt sad, but also good. Like, I feel like we got to where we needed to get to. I feel like we're really getting there. I feel like I see it all coming together. Um, Everything's making sense now. I'm still a little iffy on, like, a few little minor things. Like... I don't know, like, I know Sham Spear's the bad guy. I do. But I'm also like, did he poison himself? You know? That's the only thing. That's the only real thing. Hmm. And why is, why is it still, like, kind of unsolved? Because it feels like they should have had it kind of shut, like, sh should be done in the past, but it sounds like it wasn't really resolved fully if we're kind of reopening it, continuing it in the present. And then for, for Sherlock to kind of be like, don't talk about it, leave it alone, don't publish it, you know? Like, there's some underlying deeper conspiracy that he wants to keep quiet about. Hmm. Shady. So, is Selden the, the big issue here? Like, whatever Selden did? Or whatever treasure they stole? Something big. Something big is underlying beneath everything here. So, I'm very curious, guys. I'm excited and curious. But anyway, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, have a nice day. Bye-bye.